Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into New World's 1.0.4 update. If you guys are watching in the car or, you know, just kind of listening, doing whatever you're doing, this is going to be a great little update kind of explaining some of the big things to come on this update 1.0.4. And the biggest thing to kind of talk about when we get started is Outpost Rush and Server Transfers Rollout Plan. So obviously two big things that a lot of people have been wanting to hear more about but the big update is primarily focused on fixing the top issues our players have been hitting in recent weeks, especially those impacting wars. Notable fixes include resolving the AoE magic effect war exploit, the issue preventing players from being able to really appropriately increase their faction token cap, and beginning work on addressing issues causing invulnerability. We'd like you to thank you for your patience, and you can find a full list of changes and fixes down below that we are going to jump into right now. So the first thing is server transfers. This is something that a lot of people are very, very interested in. If you are in a bad server or a server that you don't really want to be in, US West will actually be enabled at 2 a.m. PT or 9 a.m. UTC when downtime from 1.0.4 is complete. After we monitor server transfers in US West to ensure no new issues are encountered, we will re-enable it for the remaining regions at 2 p.m. PT and 9 p.m. UTC. So US West is going to pretty much be the guinea pig when it comes down to these server transfers this time around. Going down a little bit farther, we see Outpost Rush, which is, by the way, one of the biggest things that I believe needs is, needs really a huge fix. You know, this needs to be out and about right now. People love this. It's a great way to generate gold. It's one of the main reasons I love this game is because of the PvP in it and Outpost Rush being one of the big, really, ways to PvP. Currently, I think it's a needed, needed fix. So it's great to see this. South America, 2 a.m. PT, when downtime from 1.0.4 is complete. After we monitor Outpost Rush in South America, so South America going to be the guinea pig in this one, and no issues are encountered, we will enable it for all of the following regions. And that would be U.S. East and West. Um, U.S. West would be at 5 p.m. UTC or 10 a.m. PT. And then U.S. East would be at 12 p.m. PT or 7 p.m. UTC. So keep those in mind, guys. If you're in Central Europe, you can see the times here as well. 7 p.m. PT and then AP Southeast at 2 p.m. PT as well. Our goal here is to adhere the schedule above, but may adjust based on, obviously, problems and issues that may occur, basically what they're getting out there. I do want to talk a little more about general changes, though. There's a lot more to the you know patch that uh, a lot of people don't really realize. So here, removed the Everfall starting beach to funnel new players through the other three locations to increase the probability of new players and friends being able to start together as well. So kind of a benefit there. Everfall was already, um, you know, a a hub for a lot of high level players so it's probably good to see you know some of these players going to first light monarchs plus first they get to see those regions that they probably won't spend too much time in later in the game the first house discount reduces the purchase price but does not reduce taxes however the ui indicated players that their taxes would be reduced so ui fix there slightly improved performance within war so war and uh, war performance altogether is going to be slightly improved with this change here and that's definitely something a lot of us are looking forward to slightly improved the performance of the live staff with changes to the passive abilities mending touch and blissful touch so that's going to be a correction for live staff hopefully that's going to help them out and then in update 1.0.3 they actually corrected a bug causing companies to lose income from owning multiple territories or from failed war declarations with this update they're reimbursing lost coin revenue this is huge uh companies are going to be very very pleased to hear this we also have with increased faction toe cap be early by 50 percent for each faction tier we made this change so that players can earn extra tokens even if they've hit the reputation cap and want to save up while advancing to the next faction rank so all of you new players leveling up right now if you're not hit 60 yet if you didn't have your you know max faction rep this is going to be very very helpful for you guys looking to save some of your coins something that a lot of people have been hoping for with azoth for quite some time so general bug fixes we're not going to go through every single one but fixed an issue where faction toe caps were not increasing after players had completed the rank up quest or yeah, the rank up quest for their faction which is definitely huge um, but they fixed basically a bunch of random uh, issues i'm going to kind of read through a few of these but uh, here we have fixed several rare server crash issues. That's going to be huge because a lot of people were having server crashes. Fixed an issue causing some AI not to spawn in the world as intended. Another good issue. 
fixed. And then we have fixed, fixed an issue where Mertguard, Corrupted Portals, and Shattered Mountain were distributing higher tier gear than intended and responding faster than intended as well. So those are going to be lower spawns. Hopefully those are continuing to be working when this update comes. So this could actually fix Corrupted Portals when it comes to major Corrupted Portals. And I believe, you know, this could actually be a huge, huge update for New World players altogether. I want to go down a little bit farther. Down here we have a fixed an, uh, fixed an issue where the ice pylon could stay on an infinite cooldown. We saw this fix, uh, or sorry, we saw this bug, and, uh, you know, it's been abused for quite some time, so it's good to see that being fixed. Fixed an issue causing the projectile visual to be absent from the ice gauntlet and ice pylon attacks, and then fixed an issue where players would be unable to compete or some, sorry, complete a variety of game actions after fast traveling. So a lot of great, great, great things that have been fixed here. You can also see here fixed an issue with star metal and ore calcum ore veins where large ore veins were rewarding small amounts of ore and small ore veins were rewarding large amounts of ore. So something that definitely needed to be fixed. And then here we can see here fixed an issue where enemies in Merc Guard Corrupted Portals events were dropping loot. So Corrupted Portals definitely got a nerf since the last time you guys did them. When I'm specifically talking about portals, I'm talking about the tier 65 or level 65 portals in Merc Guard. Those kind of got a little nerf since the last time you guys maybe had a chance to do them. If you had that chance, I think we had them available to us for like one morning or one half day. Uh, some speculative, uh, speculative fixes as well here. The fixes below are tentative fixes and mitigations. Our goal is to get these changes out to see if issues persist so we can continue to work on them and address them in the future if necessary. Uh, necessary. So fixed a war exploit where players could use area effect or AOE magic effects to capture rally points without taking damage. This should be improved by war performance and live staff performance updates, but we will continue to monitor to see if the issue persists. Definitely a very, very big issue. War needs to be continuing to be in that you know spotlight. Um, you know, when it's such a big deal, if you lose a war, you can't be losing wars due to lag. And I think that's, you know, something that's happened many, many times on many, many servers at this point. We have fixed several known causes of players being invulnerable. This issue is top priority for the team, and we are continuing to track down fixes for additional causes of this issue. So another great, great thing that they're doing here, another great fix. And then they have, last but not least, we have speculatively fix the issue where players could get stuck after leaving outpost rush this was a rare issue and our team was not able to reproduce it we will continue to monitor during the rollout so hopefully it doesn't sound like they you know maybe completely fixed it but they're they're going for it they're going to try it they're going to go with outpost rush being back in the game a lot of great fixes all together whether it's war outpost rush or corrupted portals i'm expecting all content to be working tomorrow about 3 p.m eastern time my time is 3 p.m or sorry eastern time so 3 p.m eastern time we'll see actually what happens here as you can see your turn uh really times here on when outpost rush will be enabled and then all, all the way up here server transfers when server transfers will be live as well so a lot of great updates by uh, New World themselves here. Very, very, very anticipated updates because we've needed some changes definitely with War as performance has been a heck of an issue. And then Outpost Rush being, you know, like I said, one of the greatest ways to get gold in the game and one of the biggest PvP content places or hubs to, you know, continue to PvP all day long. I would love to see them add hopefully at least region-wide or server-wide or cluster-wide uh, queue time so we don't have, you know, low queue numbers during the day, um, you know, and only have Q's pop at night. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll continue to keep you guys up to date on New World. So if you guys are not already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. You guys can also follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Both of those are going to be located down in the description below. I'll see you guys all in the next one.